on today's video i'm going to be talking to you guys about um this is kind of like my two month update um just because last where i left off at was i just pretty much did i think it was like a first week post-op but uh this is my two month post-op and just some things that i want to um talk to you guys about is first and foremost um i feel like i am healing a lot better now um, I still have some swelling like in the lower abdomen, but from my understanding, I heard that that the swelling will just stay there for anywhere between six months to like a year. Or so, um, I am like using my faja literally all day, every day. The only time I'd really take it off is when I wash it and when I shower. So pretty much, um, I live in my faja, uh, as funny as that sounds, I sleep with it. I sleep with my ab boards. Right now, um, one thing that I've heard and that I've seen is that if you have swelling in your stomach, you need more compression on your garment, aka your faja. Um, right now, I feel like I'm right now. I'm currently wearing a size medium in my faja, but I know that I can drop down to a small. So. I'm kind of like right now, um, just know that when you do get these type of surgeries, especially like a tummy tuck, um, you'll be going through fajas like crazy. So that's one thing that um, I'm kind of going through right now. In the beginning, I was wearing like an XL and in the Colombian fajas, they're like a lot smaller and tighter. So I bought it and they said it was a stage one, but it really wasn't a stage one, you know. Uh, Colombian fajas are seem to be more like tighter so I always recommend for you guys to wear the one that the hospital gives you or the marina brand because the marina brand is technically like for the first four weeks and after the four weeks you can move into stage two which is the Colombian fajas so let me back backtrack a little bit um so when I went to first get my my um massages my massage lady told me that there was like underneath in my bottom area, I'm going to, if I have a picture, I'm going to insert it here, but underneath where like by my, on top of my pubic area, she said it was like a little bit red and normally those are signs of infection. So she said kind of just to keep an eye on it. So I was like, okay, nothing was opening. I wasn't oozing, nothing like everything looks so good. So then, um, I kind of kept an eye on it and then I want to say by like three and a half weeks. No, no, no. Yeah, three and a half weeks, closer to four weeks. Um, so two and a half weeks, they took off all my drains. Um, I had only two left because at seven days post-op, they took one of my drains off, which was my left one, and they left my right one and the one in my back still on. So I was two and a half weeks post-op. Then they took the one on the right and the one in the back out. So then um, when they took that out, um, I started to notice like in the bottom area, it started to like open up a little bit. And I was just like, the same area that my massage lady said, hey, keep an eye on that area because it's red. Um, it started to open up a little bit. And then, and I'm gonna keep inserting pictures as I'm like talking so I can show you guys, like I was literally taking so many pictures like of my belly button and of my incision because both areas were extremely like, they took forever to close and stop bleeding. Um, and the good thing is that I had a friend that um i kind of kept in contact with because me and her were in the same room you know we had surgery same day same doctor just different times and um i had her kind of like to help me and guide me which thank god for her so so yeah so i was already about three and a half weeks post-op and i felt like the area was just opening and i'm like okay you know to drive back to tj i just can't so i'm like i'm pretty much shit out of luck, out of luck. So the doctors here didn't want to like, not want to, but they just don't, per they would prefer not to touch someone else's like job or work. It's something like that, you know, they just rather not touch someone's work like that already touched it, you know, because if they go and touch it, then what if more things get created and you just start going downfall from there? And that means, you know, that could be a lawsuit. Who knows? You know, who knows what there is to come? So what I ended up doing is I... 
sucked it up and I said, you know what, I'm just going to wait it out. So I called my doctors. I'm like, hey, you know what, I'm oozing now green stuff on my um, incision, like on my gauze, because I was still putting the gauze there because it was open, you know, and the rest of my other cut was closed. Same thing with my belly button, like it kept bleeding and I'm just like not understanding like, why is it bleeding if I they took my stitches out of my belly button from my tummy tuck scarring uh, from my tummy tuck scar or my tummy tuck cut? They didn't touch nothing from there. Like if um and it's like a if a stitch was popping out, they just cut it. They didn't really take it out because it's from the inside. So um my belly button because it was out, they just kind of took them out when they took my two drains out. So. Here I am like oozing green stuff and you guys know off the back anything that if you are having a cut or you are sneezing or coughing anything green you guys know off the back that is an infection. So that's like you guys need to need to need to like take care of that because an infection could lead to other things. So the good thing is that I caught it on time. So I was two and a half, no three and a half weeks post op and I pretty much called my doctor so I'm like hey I'm throwing green stuff out of my cut you know there's no way for me to get to tj yet so what can you do for me can you give me antibiotics he said yeah because pause there because when i didn't buy my antibiotics or all my medications out there i brought my medication down here to my doctors and then he just distributed what he was able to give me now like the spray the anti the antihispy or whatever the frick that name is um, that spray he doesn't have, nor it's a little small one that they give you. It kind of looks like betadine, but it's a really small one and you're supposed to put it on your incision and it comes out like yellow. He wasn't able to give me that. So I was, I had to like get that somewhere else, but like my pain medicine, my shots, like for the blood clots, um, my antibiotics that he was able to give me. So, um, so he gave me antibiotics. He's like, try this, like get on it right away. So I tried it right like I started it right away and then I was on it for a week. So I was already three weeks post-op. So I was like, okay, cool. Like I'm done. And then the infection like went away and my belly button started to get better. I'm going to keep inserting clips here so I can show you guys, you know, what the process was going. So here we are four weeks post-op. Again, I'm just like, what the heck, you know, like what's going on? Um... And by now, like my doctor from TJ, well, the nurse on call, I called, uh, well, I was like messaging the nurse online, like not online, but the, the doctor that discharged me, she said, Hey, you can call this nurse. I was like, okay, cool. So I was messaging her on WhatsApp and I kept on like updating her, like on my cut and like my belly button and all that. And then after that, I noticed that, um, I was using the wrong gauze. So you guys have to keep in mind that the gauze that you guys find like at the 99 Walmart or whatever, it's not the good one. Like you have to find the one that's like a got like an actual gauze that the hospital uses, you know, the doctors give you stuff like that. So I was able to find one at the doctors and I said, hey, you know what, can I grab a few? So I grabbed a few. I used it and my belly button dried up like it absorbed, you know, because you're so compressed in here that you have like no room to like air it out, you know. So what I did is I put the, like I wrapped up the gauze and I stuck it in my belly button. Eventually, every time that I would take the gauze out out of my belly button, but because it was open still and it was bleeding when I would stick the gauze, it would like stick to it, you know? So I would pull it out and then here I am bleeding again because it ripped off, you know, the, the scab. So when I found the good gauze that I'm supposed to be using, um, it didn't do that to me. So eventually my belly button closed and then my incision in the front was like opening and at this point i'm gonna insert a clip here i was seeing like a little black line the black line she said hey that's a stitch you need to get it pulled out and i'm thinking like what do you mean i need to pull it out she said all you have to do is just cut it so then when i tried to cut it i noticed that i opened the cut even more so days went by days went by and then eventually i told her i was like hey it doesn't look like it's getting any better so she said, you need to have someone pull it out. By then, I'm thinking like, what does she mean by pulling it out? So I'm thinking that, she, that I need to go under surgery and they need to like literally yank it all out, but that wasn't the case. So I made an appointment here with my physical doctor and my they didn't want to see me again, but because I am their patient, I they have to see me. So I told them I'm oozing green stuff again. Here I am with an open incision in the front 
and the green stuff is coming out. So I'm like, great. So then um, I go to them, she's seen me and she noticed the black little spot. So she said, you know, I'm just gonna tug on it just a little bit and let me know, you know, if it hurts you. So I'm like, okay, so she yanked on it a little bit. She's like, if I keep on yanking it, I think what it's going to do, it's just gonna literally wrap around your whole waist and I'm just gonna yank it out. I'm like, no, 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 I don't want you to do that. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna yank on it a little bit. So she literally like, say this is the, the, um, the stitch in my waistband. So she yanked it a little bit and she just cut it and it went right into my skin. You guys, I was already now six weeks post-op. And let me tell you, this whole cut right here, like the big old cut down there, she did that. She put some um, Neosporin. She put a gauze. She said, okay, you should be good. I'm going to put you back on antibiotics. And then I'm going to swab it because I noticed that your belly button had some type of like stuff on it. So I'm going to like wipe it and then I'm going to, you know, take it to see if it grows an infection. That later on that day, you guys this cut closed on me literally closed on me so here i was for a whole month dealing with an incision open and all it took was for just a pull cut and that was it so to conclude this little story you guys it was the worst four weeks that i had to deal with this open incision of me not knowing that i just needed for someone just to pull and cut, that was it. So if you are going through the same type of procedure, you guys, and you start to notice something black, because keep in mind, when you get the tummy tuck, they cut your stomach and then they pull the pubic area up. So it kind of could look like it's an ingrown hair, but I mean, let me tell you, you will notice, and if you have darker, hair down there then it's kind of going to be harder for you to understand the difference between the black stitch and your actual pubic hair i was able to notice because it was like coming out of my skin and i'm like okay i don't think i have you know hair inside of my incision so i said to myself i'm like okay this is something going wrong so if you notice that there's something black and it, it honestly can contrast to look like your pubic hair Make sure you keep it on. And literally, all you have to do, girls, don't panic. I promise you. And if you need to message me, <laughs> message me on Instagram and I will tell you and walk you through it. Because I could not go back to TJ, you know. And here I am, like, the doctors here don't want to help me. And I'm, like, going crazy. I'm just like, you know, what the heck's going on? Because I left the hospital with it closed and all of a sudden it's opening up. You know, what's going on? I'm going crazy. I have an infection. So it, it was just the worst. Literally, all you have to do is kind of pick at it. And if you're able to pick at it a little bit, pull it just a little bit. It's not going to hurt you, I promise you. And just cut it and you'll watch and see that it'll slide right back in and your little cut will close. So here I am. I left the doctors. Two days later, they pass by and then the doctor says, hey, it grew an infection. You have an infection going on within your belly button and in your cut. So I'm going to put you on some antibiotics. So I'm like, okay, you know, here I am, another week of antibiotics. So I finally finished the antibiotics. My body, my cuts, and everything seemed to be A1 and looking a lot better. Um, Measurement-wise, um, I do want to say that I went down two inches on my hips. And then on my waist, I did go down quite a few you know but um by me saying that i went down was because of surgery so in the beginning if you are getting surgery just make sure you guys measure your guys's hips and your waist so your waist it would be like right here and then your um your hips would be at the largest sides you know pretty much by your hips you know and then just measure yourself because you will go down. Some girls went down a whole lot. I didn't, thankfully, I only went down two inches. Right now, I fluctuate between a 44 to a 45 on my hips and then on my waist. Um, I tend to notice that when I'm not compressed really, really well and I'm taking my ab boards out, like on my abdominal area, 
I noticed that I swell up a lot and I could be a 27 and a half on my waist when I swell up and I'm not on like my ab boards, I tend to be like a 30 to a 31, sometimes a 32, but it just depends, you know? But that's pretty much my story, what I went through the whole freaking, whole month, you know? Now I'm two months post-op this Thursday. Um, and I feel like it. W I went through a whole lot you know, it wasn't just, I never thought that I'd be in this position. I thought that I was going to wake up and I was going to be one of those lucky girls to not have any complications. And that wasn't the case, you guys. So to conclude this whole story, um, just make sure you guys pay attention to your guys' body. Um, sometimes, you know, the stitches will come out of your waist, like around your waistline. But that's nothing to freak out. You know, you can just simply just tug on them a little bit and then snip them. Just don't pull too much of it because then we don't know what the heck's like inside. You know, it's supposed to be, you know, um, keeping you good inside. But for the most part, uh, my belly button is looking a lot better. My scar is, you know, it's not like disappearing yet. But I have been putting like ointment on it. Um massages i haven't really been on them that much but i know that massages take a big role in the swelling also so always just make sure that you guys are on your massages um also with your faja your garment make sure that you are compressed really really well because that ultimately will give you the results that you guys want um and when i say be compressed and be really tight not to the point where your skin's like creasing like that, you know, in the middle. So let's use like my cleavage for an example. So if your skin is creasing like that right here, then that means your faja is too tight, girls. It's too tight. And then if you do have some areas that are uneven and whatnot, that's what your ab boards come in place. Like keep your ab boards on all the time. And if you're going to go out and if you don't want to wear your faja, I suggest you guys at night put that baby on with your ab boards in the front and the back and I promise you your swelling will go away literally because that's what happened to me. Um, I haven't taken my faja off to kind of like go out and wear regular clothes which I wish I could but right now I just have too much swelling. I'm going to show you guys right now what my swelling looks right now. I after this video I was waiting to like record it because I've been kind of prolonging this video for so long. So I wanted to just give you guys kind of like a two month update, um, pretty much where I've been at, how my body is healing my, so far, you know, it's been healing great. I feel amazing. I feel great. I just, the swelling on my belly is real still. And as opposed to every other female out there, you know, that's gotten a tummy tuck. So don't get scared because you got off the table and you were flat, flat, and now you are just little fluffy, fluffy. Like it's okay, girls. We go through stages that people don't understand that we're gonna get swelling right here you know the swelling is gonna eventually go down but through time you know everything takes time so that's pretty much with today's video guys thank you so much for watching i appreciate every single one of you guys for watching and subscribing and turning on that little bell and keeping me updated and also you guys following my instagram and following here and following just me everywhere that really truly means a lot um and I want to welcome all the new subscribers because I do see you guys a lot. And thank you so much for all the love and support on each and every one of my videos. When my videos like hit over 10,000 views, which that's freaking awesome, you know. And I hope to continue to keep doing this journey and updates with you guys. Because I know a lot of you guys keep asking me like, what's your doctor? How much? What'd you get? You know, how does your body look like now? And all that good stuff. But it's just through time, ladies, you know. Right now, my body doesn't feel amazing like how I want it to be where my stomach's like super flat but it's swelling you know and it's all in the right compression with your faja so that pretty much concludes today's video I will show you guys my swelling right now so you guys know that my body isn't just super flat is it super mommy super mommy yeah so this is my belly as you can see my belly is it can be flatter that's me sucking it in. Yes, I can suck it in. But it's swelling just right here, you guys. And it's because 
I need to go put my ab board on. <laughs> and also because my faja is not super tight right here. And this is where I need more compression. So that's another thing that I will talk to you guys about fajas on the next video. But I really wanted to get this video out to you guys because this video is well needed out there for a lot of my females out there that are dealing kind of with the same thing. But yeah, you guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys on my next video. Really? You like me? Do you like me? Do you like me? <laughs> You're recording? Hey girl! What the heck? Ew! Hold on, I'm trying to show them the bad Hey guys! Hey guys! Oh my god, that looks so sick! Oh my god!